Praise the Lord, beloved. It's a blessing to come your way again on Armed with the Word. It is my prayer that you and your household are doing well in the Lord. So on this channel, we encourage ourselves as believers to stand on the Word of God in order to defeat the enemy at his games, his tricks and his traps. And it is my prayer that if this is your first time watching this video, that you will subscribe and be part of this family. And to all my subscribers, God bless you and welcome back. And so today we want to continue our series on uh, prosperity. We've talked about prosperity in general as God's um, desire for his children and we've talked about prosperity in our health and our finances and uh, today we want to talk about prospering in our marriage and we will conclude in the next episode with our children so when you uh, talk about uh, our marriage. Our marriage is one of the areas, like other areas of our lives, that the enemy fights. The enemy uh, tries to throw in everything so that uh, the marriage will not stand. But marriage is an institution that was designed by God. And therefore, any marriage that does not have its foundation on, on Christ uh, stands the risk of crumbling, of crumbling. And I want to uh, read uh, the scripture that we've been, uh, the main scripture we've been using is, uh, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. That um, the Apostle John was writing to Gaius and he says that to prosper in every way, to succeed in every way. And that every way includes our marriages. And so God being the creator of our marriage has designed our marriages to bring him glory, to exude his glory. But you and I both know that marriage is work marriage is work um it, it's not easy it's not easy if you have been married you know if um you are about to get married then a uh, beloved uh much prayer much prayer goes into making a marriage work and so i want to read um matthew 7 24 to 27 and it reads Therefore, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. On a rock. 25. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock and then 26 says but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand the rain came down the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash, with a great crash. And this is Jesus speaking. And so the, the word of God just tells us that, you know, those who hear the word of God and do them, and do them are like the wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rock we're we are talking about here is Jesus Christ, is Jesus Christ. 
Jesus should be the center and the foundation of our marriage. As believers, we cannot build a healthy, uh, prosperous marriage without Jesus. He must be in the center. And our manual and instructions must be the word of God must be the word of God for our marriages to prosper, for our marriages to exude the glory of God, then we have to use the guidelines given to us by Jesus, by his word, and not the guidelines of this world. When we use the guidelines of this world, then we are like the foolish man that the scripture is speaking about, that builds his house on the sun. We cannot build our, our homes, our marriages on, on the world's theories. We cannot build our homes on the falsehood of the enemy, but on the word of God. And so when you read Ephesians 22, uh, 33, and you can read this on your own, it is filled with uh, instructions. It is filled with, with tips and, and, and things that can help our marriages. It speaks, it speaks of unconditional love, loving the wife, loving your spouse. It speaks of selfless love. It speaks of, of submission and it speaks of respect. And these are all things that seems foolish to the world, but it is things that will make our marriages prosper. We fail, we fail when we try to adapt the world. We fail when we try to adapt the world. And I want to also read Mark 10, 6 to 9. And this uh, provoked my thought. It provoked me a lot into prayer. And it sucks says that, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has put together, let no one put ascender or let no one separate and so i want to dwell on the unity i want to dwell on the unity and the oneness um so go in god's plan for our marriage god wants us to be one what god wants us the couple to be together there has to be that unity there has to be that oneness if we are to uh, fulfill that which God has, has brought us together to fulfill. And so for, for us as couples, then we need to be united physically. We need to be united spiritually, financially, emotionally, and sexually. We cannot be separate. We cannot have separate mindsets. We cannot have separate goals. We cannot have separate um, purposes, but live the purpose of God for our lives. And so every blessing that uh, we can experience as couples hang on this truth, hang on this foundation of unity, of unity. And we see a lot of marriages that um, fall apart. And it's because maybe one, one member of, of the marriage is going his or her own way there is not that unity there is not that purpose that there is not that goal as a married couple that uh, and that causes the enemy to come together to come into the marriage and try and uh, cause chaos havoc and try to um, destroy it and so when when we look at our marriages and and the the fact that we have to be united when we are united when we are one we prosper we prosper spiritually we prosper spiritually uh, we are able to discern we are able to go to God together we are able to f fight the enemy because the word of God says one person can put put away a thousand to fly but then when it's two when the two of us come together we are able to put 10,000 to fly and so that tells you the power the power we will have as a married couple to be able to fight our battles 
and and prospering spiritually there is not this confusion about when one person is working for the lord and the other person is doing his own thing it brings confusion in the house but when we are all doing what God has called us to do when we are all serving the purposes of God then there is an agreement there is a spiritual agreement and when there is agreement we all know as believers when there is unity when there is agreement in the home then blessings blessings come into our home and then also we are able to raise godly children our children are not confused our children are not confused and and this is this is what I know children are like sponge children will draw whatever we do and so if there is confusion in our spiritual standing our children pick up on that they will pick up on that and children will always go to the path of least resistance so if mom is always saying let's go to church let's do this mom is forcing the things of god and dad is not they will go the path of dad and so we have we as married couples have to make be careful and be united in the things that we do so that we can raise godly children to the glory of God and then also um, when we are united we receive blessings from God we receive blessings Proverbs 18 22 says he who finds a wife he will find a wife finds a uh, finds a good thing and receives blessings and favor from God so finding a wife finding a wife causes God's favor to come to you it is my prayer that if you are not married yet then you will find that that wife you will find that spouse you will find that which God has designed for you and receive favor from the Lord it, it may be your marriage did not work maybe something went wrong maybe there was not this unity of spirit maybe there was not this togetherness so the marriage did not thrive it is my prayer it is my prayer that our god who is able to to replace to renew to replenish our god will bring you that partner that will unite with you in spirit that will unite with you in every area of your life that you will receive that unconditional love that you desire that God has called you to experience that you will receive that respect that that submission will be in your marriage it is my prayer it is my prayer that even as we are working on this series that those of us that are married maybe the enemy is has entered into your marriage and the enemy is creating havoc it is my prayer that the holy spirit will breathe afresh on every marriage will breathe afresh on this institution that god has created to to demonstrate his glory to the world that god will renew will renew your marriage and bring life into it that we will be intoxicated with each other's love and that our marriage will exude god's glory to the world it is my prayer that you and your household will be blessed will continue to be blessed in the lord until we meet again god bless you i love you